let's just get this straight. Want to? Hello, we're gonna be working with the fibers from the Paradise Fiber uh, subscription box for September 2021. I'm gonna do this backwards and flip it around so you can see it from like a point of view. The ones I got are the Canary and the, I think it was called San Marino Blue. I will put the correct name up if I did not get it right, but I think it was San Marino Blue. This is Mulberry Silk and then this is Flex. So we're gonna talk a little about these and then get started. First of all, they do not stretch. If you put them in a roll egg, the I don't know, conventional wisdom says that making that spiral in a roll egg and then spinning from it will add some spring, but it can only add so much to something that has none. And also one person said they thought that the flax would be too long for my drum carter. I thought I would just quickly pull a staple and see how long this flax really is. Uh, it is not too long for a drum carter. We could drum card this. I'm going to do this on a blending board. And I have a couple other colors of Tessa Silk from my own shop that I'm gonna add just to give myself a little bit more silk. My goal is to spin enough to make a small, cute little bag because, again, this yarn is not gonna stretch very much. That's not a bad thing, but if I weave it, it'll make a really kind of I mean, sturdy is a weird word for silk and flax, but it'll make a sturdy, non-stretchy bag that'll be really cool. And I'm even considering weaving it in a cylinder so that I can just flatten it into a bag, but we'll see how that goes when I get to the weaving. I'm also gonna try three different uh, prep methods and see which one I like to spin the best and kind of talk about talk through the spinning of them so but I will end up using all the yarn unless some of it turns out just super not usable but I don't anticipate that happening let's get started the first method I'm going to use is I'm going to make puni roll eggs out of this so those are very, very tight. The terminology has kind of evolved. A lot of people would just call these punies. So, I mean, it's not wrong to say it that way, but you, you kind of hear different terminology all the time. I'm pretty excited to try these. So I'm gonna start with the punies and I'll show you the difference in how you pull them off. And when we get to the spinning, we'll talk about how they spin because I don't really, I kind of have my doubts. I'm gonna say that right up front because some of these fibers are gonna be long. And a puni, a lot of times, would be used to keep a fiber that's short together while you get ready to spin it because um, you do roll it so tightly, it helps those little tiny short fibers stay together. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of teal to this one and I'm gonna add a little bit of orchid to the next one. The teal has been the most popular color by far. Um, so I, I, my prediction kind of is that the flax, they're just such different fibers that what's gonna happen, I think, is that the flax color is really gonna pop against the silks, but you know, I don't really know because I've never done this particular blend before ever. I'm gonna put a little bit more flax in and then I'm gonna pull these off. So we're ready to go ahead and pull these off. Oh my God, Luther's sleeping in a canvas. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is sandwich these Muppet hair ends down here, all right, between my dowels. And I want to get pretty close to the ends, as close as I really can and still flip it over and catch it. 
if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna go a little further. So right before I get to the teeth of the board, I am gonna start drafting. My thumbs are down against the bottom edge of the board to provide me some leverage while I draft. And I am just gonna start drafting these. You really want a puni to be tight. Okay, so I think you can see right along this whole dowel rod that this is getting really pulled on there tightly, which is good, that is what we want. And we want it to be thin. So keep just drafting it out like this until it breaks off. And then to make it even tighter, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm actually gonna roll the dowel in it. And I'm holding it pretty tightly because I really want those fibers to stay tight down because you see the flax wants to stand up straight it's not as like malleable as the silk so this does make it harder to get your dowels out just FYI so if you have rough dowels at all <laughs> you might have some trouble these dowels are well used and they're smooth but this is tight this is quite tight on these dowels you can see and I am gonna take just one out. So I'm gonna grip it with my left hand. It doesn't matter which hand you do it with, but I'm gonna grip it with my left hand. Make sure that you don't have any fiber underneath the hand that's gonna pull a dowel out. So that's why I kind of scooch it up, just make sure. And then I'm gonna grip the very bottom of the fiber right here, okay? With my thumb and my forefinger is my best way. And then I just kind of wiggle out one of the dowels but it's it should not be easy to wiggle out so don't worry if you're like okay this is hard to do just relax these are very smooth fibers so it will come out oh this is good this is quite tight and i do not like a tight roll egg normally if it has wool in it but i figured this is a good time to try to do this so i'm gonna roll it because nothing's prettier And so I'm gonna roll the rest of these off. Here's a little tip just in case you have trouble. Sometimes when I draft one off the way I just did, I will have trouble getting the next one started. So what I'll do is take a knitting needle. This is a size six. A smaller one is probably a little bit better, but I had one handy. And just run it straight across your teeth. You should not be bending your teeth doing this if you do it straight across. And go under the fibers a little and lift them so you can get the next one started All right, so this time I'm gonna do my looser version of roll legs. Many of you have seen this before and I am gonna change from the teal. And put some orchid with it. I'm not gonna worry about pulling these out. I'm gonna grab these te this little chunk of teal out but otherwise I'm not gonna worry about pulling these out because the colors that are gonna be in it are basically the same. So I'm gonna start, I think, with I think I'm gonna do it the exact same way, but this time I can put more fiber on it because I'm not making a puni.
Um, and I let these hang quite a bit longer. You can see they're, they were quite a bit longer off the end on purpose. I'm gonna smooth these down with my hand, but not gripping and twisting like I do when I smooth them down really tight. I'm just trying to smooth those flyaway ends. And then again, I'm gonna grab the bottom, see this, just like this, and pull one of those out. And you can tell that that was much looser and easy to pull out. I'm gonna go ahead and roll one of these because you know how I love them. Oh, look at this one. Oh my gosh, that is insane. So I'm gonna roll, go ahead and do this again. And I think I'll probably get two or three. I did put more fiber on this time, so hopefully I'll get three. Yeah, we're gonna do three. Another thing you can do to smooth it is just lightly roll it against the teeth. Without pulling, just roll it. You can see how easy those come out that way. Here are the, these second three. And then the third method I'm gonna use is actually to make a roving off of your blending board. I've said a million times that I'm gonna do this. I haven't done it yet. It's time, we gotta do it. So I'm going to use black for the base this time and then we will add in the two colors that came with the Paradise box. So this is actually black Tussa silk from my shop. There are multiple ways to take this off in a roving. I like to take it off in a bat and just pull it into a roving, but you can do different things. And one thing you can do, hang on, let me get a diz out. One thing you can do that I have successfully done in the past is you can actually diz, in a way it's sort of similar to a hackle, diz back and forth off of this. So I'm actually gonna do a little bit of that and we'll see how it goes. All right, I've kind of twisted the fiber. I'm gonna go into the diz and pull it through with a crochet hook. Okay. Then I'm gonna pull off and up. I'm gonna lift this up a little, all the end, and then I'm gonna pull across So um, again, if you get too much fiber, I'm holding it with my left and drafting a little so that it'll fit through the diz. And then you just draft. I've got a little too much here. I'm gonna thin it out. So that this should slide over pretty easily. If not, you do have too much going through. So, and I am using my medium sized hole on this.
spinning off the Puni Rolex. So this is a very, very slippery fiber. And I was finding if I didn't let enough twist build up before I allowed it into the Rolex, they were coming apart. So I did have a little tiny bit of trouble with that, but I adjusted pretty quickly. And I do like this method for this blend. It's just so slippery. It's hard to keep together otherwise. So here we are spinning the looser roll legs and again I did not pre-draft at all partially just because this stuff just falls apart and the looser roll legs want to fall apart even more but I do kind of like these better and I think it's just a personal preference thing or it could have been the addition of the purple because the purple made them so beautiful. And for the last sample, I used a short forward draw. I was actually worried it might not hold together as well as I wanted to, but it was fine. And I love the black against those two really bright colors. They just pop. This is the yarn from the Poonies. Uh, it's just so slippery, you need a lot of twist, but it worked fine drafting directly off the Poonie without like a pre-draft and it turned out pretty cute. This is the yarn from the kind of looser Rolex and it also turned out really pretty and basically had the same problem with it. It just doesn't want to hold together because you know there's no crimp and also it needed a lot of twist to hold together this is from the roving that we pulled off the blending board i actually love this with the black and the really bright colors up against it but it's really easy to spin and i did just go ahead and spin off the end of that roving what i had left over i combined with a little bit of the teal a little bit of the purple and a good amount of the black and spun up the rest of it straight off my drum carter. I didn't film that, but um, just for time's sake, I needed to get it done so I could share it with you. And I am very happy with how it turned out, but I, and um, the one thing that I wanna say about this, and it's not, it's gonna be very easy to see, but there is just one other thing I wanna show you with this yarn. I mentioned in the beginning that because the flax and the silk, neither of them has any crimp. Uh, they're basically, there's no stretch to these. And I thought I would just quickly show you, even though I spun this one off of roving, there's literally no stretch. See that? Let me show you one that I spun right off the end of a roll egg. Cause that would normally give almost anything a little bit more stretch. Hang on. This still has no stretch, which is not a bad thing at all. 
it's just something to note when you are picking a pattern for it or trying to figure out what you're going to make with it. Thanks for joining me for this spin. I am going to weave this and we're going to talk about it soon. I hope you guys have a great week. I love you. Bye.